Hello, I'm Chapa. Recently graduated with a PhD from the Department of Electrical Engineering, University of Moldova. Shown here is my research title, which is in short, how robots can perceive or understand a situation by observation when they are encountered with humans. I basically conducted my experiments in a simulated domestic environment in the robotics lab at the department, but the research can be applied for social environments in general. Let me give you a little background for my research. Let's say there's a social robot, which is an intelligent agent behaving in social environments as we do. We expect certain approved behaviors from a robot when we deploy robots in our environments. But for robots to behave accordingly, they should get adequate knowledge of their setup. This setup includes people around, surrounding objects, and the environment, and who the robot is going to interact with. After acquiring this knowledge, the robot will become aware of the situation or situation cautious. Social robots or robots which are some kind of assistance to people have to understand the situation of its people. Then it should look for the best moment to interact. Such robots are more human-like, more collaborative, therefore easy to deal with. These two images show how robots evolved up to socially intelligent level from the past. In the past, we instructed robots when we wanted to get something done from them. But in modern approaches, the robot is equipped with adequate sensors to see around and perceive its user, other people, objects, and the situation of the robot itself, including its location obstacles around, etc. In daily life, people engage in various tasks and these are visible to outside world by means of different poses, objects involved, words, surroundings and many more. So in my research, I focused on developing models for robots to understand nonverbal behavior of people, although I considered objects and environments as well in the end. Concepts including reading human body language, understanding semantics related to human mind, objects and their activities have been used in my research to support these models. With this background, let me explain the scope of my research. I first developed some less computer intensive and less time consuming methods to recognize people's gestures, postures, upper body movements and the activities they are involved in. Then I integrated several of these algorithms and developed cognitive models or how robots should think to understand a situation by analyzing people's gestures, movements, activities, people and objects in the environment. After analyzing these factors in people, objects and the robot itself, it will decide whether it should go towards a person and talk to him or her. Depending on the analysis, according to the robot's brain or cognitive models we develop, it will decide on whether or not to talk, or if talk, how long to talk, and how close it, it should get to the person before talking. For these cognitive models, I used fuzzy inference systems to build simple models with only a few attributes, such as gestures and movements. When more and more attributes were recognized using the methods devised during this research, I needed advanced technologies such as autoregressive models 
supervised machine learning techniques. So as complexities grew in an encounter, robot's assessment of that encounter was inadequate. So that's why we needed uh, advanced technologies in this regard. But we observed during the experiments that different people deal with the robot differently. Some people preferred less talk with the robot, while some preferred more talk. Age, gender, how relaxed a person is are some factors which influence such preferences. So in the end, I used semi-supervised techniques such as reinforcement learning to adapt the robot's model to the environment and people it interacts with. So that was the final stage of my research where the robot could learn and adapt to its environments by experience. It yielded better results. That means those approaches ensured higher user satisfaction upon the behavior of the robot during the experiments. Here are some factors related to the robot itself, people and environment within a situation. These factors have been used as the inputs to the cognitive models we developed so far. This is Myro, the robotic platform we use for most of our experiments involving human-robot interaction or HRI. It has two cameras for vision, a manipulator to handle objects, and a navigation platform for mapping and locomotion. It further has microphones and speakers for speech. Human studies are an important part of HRI to first find out how humans behave and then engrave those features in robots. We conducted several experiments by means of surveys, observation at a distance or wizard of Oz studies where you teleoperate the robot but the user thinks that the robot itself generates all the responses. Next you will see one such human study we conducted in the lab in the form of a Wizard of Oz study. Here we observed the length of a conversation a person would have with the robot depending on the number of people around, task of a person and the living area of that person vary.
here's a set of gestures Myrop could identify using one of the approaches developed during this research. Again here, some gestures and postures the robot could recognize at the end of the project. Here is an example how the robot incorporated the activity space of a person to approach that particular person. The robot will use the least obstructed side of a person to approach that person. In the end, we extended our model to an adaptive approach based on reinforcement learning where the robot will adjust its behavior according to the dynamics of the factors within a context. The more experience the robot gathers, the higher the feedback score it receives from people upon its behavior. And one more thing, our models were evaluated using t-tests ANOVA tests, cohen scappa method, and box and whisker plots. Adapting to such changes in context immensely enhanced the capability of the system to replicate dynamic human behaviors during an interaction. So this improvement could be proven by the user feedbacks received upon the robot's proactive behaviors. And as a final remark, the commitment of volunteers is very important in this type of work. This is my team the Intelligent Service Robotics Group. The team is led by Professor Buddhika Jayasekara. Active members of the team since 2009 are here. With us, there are masters, MPhil, and doctoral students working on various types of assistive robots like MyRob. Information about the group could be found on ResearchGate using the above links. For more interactive information on our work, visit our Facebook page. I mentioned the links to my research work as well, in case you are interested to know more about the ongoing projects and research. Hope I will some inspiration for new emerging researchers in the future. Also hope I was able to give you some inside of the contents in a PhD and how to approach a problem step by step. Thank you very much.